Guys, I'm going to call your name. Why do you bring the seat that you're sitting in? Make a straight line in front of my desk so I got some good eye contact with you. I have Antonio. Can I have you over here to my left? Thank you for everything. Have you got that seat over there? I'm going to have you come over here to my right. I'm just going to go a little bit to your right, back up just a tad bit. So I'm just going to go a little bit to your right, back up a little more. I'm just going to go a little bit more to your right, left back up. So guys, again, just to introduce myself, again, my name is Mr. Joseph Cost, I'm pilot sales manager here. I just want to reiterate this interview process so you guys so you understand what I'm looking to get done today. What you guys just went through is a pre-screen process, and as you guys can tell, I spent more time with you two individually today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about 35 minutes here to cover the position in complete detail. During this time, I'm going to ask you guys any questions that you have. Again, I've been doing this for a very long time. Very confident I'll cover everything I need to with you. I'm going to put if you do have any questions, just drop them down in your notes, because I'm going to each of you one-on-one, follow a special portion to give you a final decision today on whether or not I'm out of a position here for you or not. Okay. And again, I'm going to base most of my decision on you based on saying I've done this portion. So my first question for you guys, and you can raise your hand whenever you want to answer this, why do you guys think I run this interview in a group setting versus one-on-one? -on -one? Why do I do my interviews this way? Um, I, guess, I guess you can see uh, um, how other people are like, um, besides it's just you. Sure. And Tony, why do you think I run my interviews in a group setting? Right, Helps me save time because if I sat down with each of you for 60 minutes, I wouldn't have much of a personal life. My girlfriend probably break up with me, <laughs> um, which is why I do this in a group setting. I'm able to save a lot of time, I'm able to gauge people how to interact with one another, um, and I'm able to really compare and contrast. We don't have people with a ton of experience, um, but we look for people with common qualities and traits, and they have to be those like the position. Now, as far as an outline of what to expect out of the day, guys, go ahead and jot this down in your notes. Um, here's what to expect out of the interview. I want to talk to you guys about the company today. I want to talk to you guys about the about the product. I want to talk to you guys about the market. I want to talk about the pay. Unless you guys want to skip the pay. You guys want to skip the pay? Yeah, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, I'm talk about pay, and then I'm talk about training, and then I'm going to wrap up with the perks and the benefits. Now, you don't have to write down every single word I say, but as you can tell, I can tend to speak relatively quickly, but anything I put on this board or I reiterate to put in your notes, I definitely want you to take it down. That way, if you are selected for the position, you can share the notes with your parents. I'm also going to have my outline here today just to make sure I cover everything I need to. Okay. Now, if I excuse you before this interview process is over, it's absolutely nothing personal. I'm just not in the business to waste my time. And if I don't think you'd be good for the position, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Does that sound fair, guys? Yeah. I also let you know, guys, if you're a little bit nervous, it's okay. I sat in the same exact seats when I started with the company. I started over four years ago. I was a rising sophomore in college. I attended Belmont Abbey in Belmont, North Carolina. Have any of you guys ever heard of Belmont, North Carolina before? No. Exactly. There are more cows than people. <laughs> it's a very small town. Um, I got a scholarship to resident collegially at Belmont, where I majored in business management. So really, at the time when I started with Cutco, I was looking for a job that's going to bounce well around my wrestling practices, my class schedule. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do long term. I was studying business management, um, so I wasn't sure exactly, but I knew I needed some good sales skills and some good experience, um, and someone's going to help me get the foot in the door with other companies potentially once I graduated. Um, I got a chance to advance and move up throughout my years in school, and now I have the opportunity to run this office here in an apprenticeship role with Mr. Herman, our owner, before moving to a corporate position with the company here in the next six to eight months. Now, it's no secret, I'm very young, but our people here get promoted based on performance, not based on tenure, so it's all based on the how hard it works here with us. Now, the first thing I'll talk to you guys about is the company. Now, as far as the company goes, guys, and she sure you guys understand the many smaller corporations are owned by larger ones, all right? We are no different. Our parent company is Cutco. Cutco was founded in 1949. We are Vector. We were founded in 1981. 
Now, if you look at the insight, in 1981, we did $750,000 in revenue. In 1992, we grew to $75 million. And today, we're doing over a quarter of a billion dollars in sales each and every single year. So, obviously, you notice a lot of growth. So, Antonio, my first question for you is, what are the advantages to working for a company that's consistently growing? What are the advantages to that? Um, you know, there will be anything helpful. So, again, job stability. So, because we're consistent growth, we're able to offer job stability. We're also able to offer advancement opportunities for the students that we work with um, because of our consistent growth throughout the years. Now, in terms of when we were founded, though, as far as our corporate structure goes, guys, please jot this down in your notes. We have over 600 offices across the country for Cutco. So over 600 offices. <clears throat> in terms of revenue, guys, we are the number five office in the entire country currently. Now, before we moved into this location, for the last 36 consecutive months, we wore number one in the country. So you can imagine I'm pretty upset right now. Um, if you get the chance to work with me, you understand very soon I'm very competitive. I hate losing more than I like winning. We're not in a place where we necessarily need to select more people, but we are looking for a few more superstars to add on to our team to make sure we win our national championships this year. And we destroy Northeast Atlanta and Denver, Colorado on the team rights. We're very competitive here. Now, when we were founded, though, one decision we made was who we were going to work with. We work with all types of people, from students to career professionals to people looking for supplemental income. Now, some companies, um, Shazor, correct? <laughs> yeah. Some companies don't like to work with students. Why do you think that? Um, they think that uh, they don't use their time management as well. Like, they don't have time. So a lot of students' schedules are very hectic. Yeah. So a lot of companies yeah. don't want to waste their time working with a student who's always out of town. Their schedules yeah. are all over the place. Um, and it's tough for students. And um, again, a lot of companies also don't work with students due to the lack of experience. Yeah. It's that catch-22 phrase, how can you get the experience without the job, but how can you get the job without the experience? It's an infinite paradox, um, which is why here our primary focus is we love working with students because we understand that from the ages of 18 to 25 years old, it's a very delicate time in someone's life. A lot of big decisions are being made, where they want to go to school, where they want to study, who they want to marry sometimes. So we want to provide proper mentorship and guidance to the students that we work with. 80% and we want to turn our students into five-star recruits once they leave us. 80% of the students that we work with do not turn us into a career. They use a stepping stone job, work with us for a couple summers while in college, and land a dream internship, a dream position because of the poise and the confidence that our students develop here through our programs. And then 20% of students such as myself fell in love with the opportunity and got an opportunity to make it a career due to their performance. But I'll go more detail about that when I cover the perks and the benefits of the position. Now when we were founded though we made five main decisions on how we're going to run. It feels very important that you guys know these, so make sure you drop these down in your notes. The first decision that we made when we were founded was to only manufacture high quality products. You just only manufacture high quality products. Shazor, why do you think we chose to manufacture high quality versus low quality? Um, with high quality, um, the duration uh, of the product can extend more than someone who gets a cheaper product. So it's no secret, right? People like quality. Yeah. Uh, we would rather have the real Gucci shoes and the fake Gucci shoes. Again, it's no secret here, which is why we only manufacture high quality products. We will not release the products with us come through extensive research to be the best in this industry. But I'll go into more detail about that when I show you guys the products. Um, then the second decision that we made as a company when we were founded was how to present our products. We chose to present our products in a very low key, relaxed manner. Now, how many of you, by a show of hands, have ever met a pushy salesperson before? Do we oh, like pushy yeah. salespeople? Absolutely not. No. Our philosophy here is this. If a customer buys, they buy. And if not, that's okay. The important thing is that it represents an educated customer so they can make a smart, safe, educated, educated decision with us. And dealing with our customers and our people in this way has been very important to us, which is why we have been around for 70 plus years. And because dealing with people ethically is very important. Then the third decision that I made as a company when we were founded was to direct market our products. Meaning we do not sell cocoa in stores. And tell me, why do you think we decided to not sell cocoa in stores? Um, make it more exclusive. We want to buy it more. We wanted to provide a lure of exclusivity behind our products. We also wanted to uh, build a personal relationship with customers. We also wanted to cut the middleman out completely. That way we save our consumers and money. And I'm sure you guys understand that when a product starts in the factory, goes to the factory, it's a wholesale, it's a retail, and then finally ends up in the customer's house. Each step along the way, the price of that product must increase, which can be the disadvantage to buying from a company via a retail store. I hope you guys don't think it costs $1,000 to make an iPhone. I think we'd all cry over how much it actually costs to make an iPhone. Um, but that's a disadvantage, which is why we direct market, so our customers pay for the quality of the gear, uh, the product, not that market that's associated along with it. But I'll talk to you guys more about that when I cover the product section. Mm -hmm. Then the third decision that we made as a company, where, or excuse me, fourth decision we made as a company we were founded, was to have a corporate philosophy of honesty and integrity. First, with our customers. There was no need to lie or to exaggerate about our products in any way. And I'm sure you guys understand that when a salesperson lies about a product they're selling, it destroys the brand of the uh, reputation of the company. 
but it's going to be the disadvantage to that, which is why, again, it's very important that people are very open and honest with customers, and not just with customers, but it's also important that we're very open and uh, very uh, honest with our people. Mm -hmm. The likelihood that I select both of you guys to work with me today is very low, but if you do get the chance to work with me, you'll understand very soon, I am very blunt, I am very upfront, I do not sugarcoat anything at all. I give respect and honesty to people that I work with, and I, and I expect respect and honesty back from those that I work with as well. And dealing with our customers and our people in this way is important to us, which is why we've had an A-plus rating trade with the Better Business Bureau since 1990. Something that we take a lot of pride in. And then the fifth and final decision that I made as a company when we were founded was how we were going to pay our people. We decided to pay a lot more than other entry-level jobs. Shazor, why do you think that is? Um, it's because in those those uh, other companies, they have, uh, they're, I guess, you're, they're not working alone from here. You're like, it's just you one on one with the customer, and uh, and the other uh, bigger companies like like all of these Macy's or something like that, wherever they just sell knives, they're just trying to sell it to you, but you're just trying to build a relationship. Not quite. The reason why we have a higher pay rate is because we wanted to attract higher quality applicants to our position. Because um, I'm sure you guys understand that someone who understands their worth is not going to go work for a company that pays a minimum wage or is not going to do it. Which is why we have a higher pay rate for our students. Oh. That way we can attract the best and the brightest in the area. And we can make sure we're more selective in our interview process with who we select the position. Um, but we also offer a two-part pay program here. We offer a base pay rate. It's a guaranteed rate. So our representatives are guaranteed a steady, consistent paycheck each and every single week. That way everyone have, no, uh, have a very low pressure. There's no, uh, there's no need to be pushy. Um, then we also offer an incentive program, aka commission. Now, I'm sure some of you guys have had jobs before where you worked harder than others, but at the end of the day, at the end of the week, you got paid less for the same. Here it is very different. Our representatives who work harder here, they earn more income, period, end of story, because of our incentive program. But I'll go into more detail about that when I cover the pay program. Now, I'm going to talk to you guys about the uh, product. Now, as far as the product goes, guys, I'm going to show you guys a few examples of the product. I'm going to show you exactly how representatives use the product and what they do. Who's recommended the job by a friend? It was, you know, Rashad, right? Cool. So I'm going to show you exactly what Rashad does and how he presents the product on the point. Okay. Do either of you have a penny on you by any chance? You guys have pennies in your pockets? I only carry hundreds, so I think I have hundreds. Do you have a penny on you? No pennies on you? You do need a job, don't you? Yep. You got a penny? Yeah. Yep. 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 So guys, I'm going to show you guys a few examples of the product. I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do, what they say, and how they present the product on an appointment. Okay? And I'm, I'm basically going to do a mini presentation up here for you guys so you see exactly what it is that our people do. Now, what are these called? Scissors. Scissors, right? These are Taco Super Shears. Come apart. Really easy cleaning. So you can throw them right back in together just like this. They fit right-handed. They fit left-handed people. Not too sharp for the touch. It's very safe for children. Not too pointy either. Again, very safe for kids. Surgical stainless steel. Very similar to what dentists and eye doctors use when they're operating. There were as a plastic, very similar to what bowling balls, pool balls, and football helmets made out of. One of the strongest plastic composites in the world will break down in the dishwasher. Representatives will explain that to the customer, then they'll grab a penny right here, and then they'll just cut it right in half. Okay? Now, that's a real penny, right? Yeah. Now, how do you think a customer would react to seeing that happen? Um, they would definitely want it. They'd probably freak out and say, what's this voodoo magic? So, yeah. um, guys, um, those are super shoes. I'm going to pass around uh, show you another few examples of the product. And when I pass this around, guys, I'm going to ask you guys do not touch the edges of these knives. I have a workout to get to after this, and I'd rather go do that and not take you guys to the hospital. So be very, very careful when I pass these around. Now, I'm under the assumption that you guys coming to this interview, you don't know anything about knives. And if you did, I'd be a little bit weirded out. Um, but, you know, again, there are different types of knives out there. Our knives are very unique because we use something called um, a universal original design. All of our knives are made in America. The grooves on the handles, the only knife handle in the world endorsed by the American Arthritis Association because of the eccentric beauty. Surgical stainless steel, again, thermal resin plastics, dishwasher safe, American made, and then a very special type of edge. Now, as far as what represents use to present the product, represents use two things. Um, the first thing I want you guys to jot down is something called a sample kit. A sample kit. First thing is something called a sample kit. And what our sample kit is, is we loan out $450 retail worth of cut code for free to the students that we select for those positions to use on the presentations. They are not required to purchase or buy anything. It is given to them completely for free. And the second thing it represents use is this. And this right here. I want you guys to jot this down your notes. This is called a prospectus. Okay, it's called a prospectus. We also call it the blue book because, well, it is blue. Represent, well, somebody who's open this up in an appointment. <laughs> they'll talk to the customer about, again, the products that Cutco makes, the flatware, cookware, knives, all that kind of stuff. They'll put the page. 
Let's talk about the background of the company, 1949, American made, 17 million customers. That way, you know, people don't think we're making these knives in our basement. They know we've been around for a very long time. And the the page. Talk to the customer about uh, jump knives and how they just break over and over and over again. It's the same thing. Just like shoes wear out eventually, TVs, yeah. it's the same thing. Everything's done to break down. Um, iPhone, same thing. Then the representative will flip the page. It will talk to the customer about the features and benefits of the product, how it's made, the materials, the craftsmanship. And we teach our representatives exactly what to say on each page. We give them a script. So oh, as long okay. as someone can read, they can sell cut code. If they can't read, it's okay. We have pictures. Okay. Um, and then they'll talk about the special type of edge. Now, what's the most important thing a knife should be able to do? Cut. Cut, right? So we are going to cut some stuff up, but I'm not going to feed you guys any leather today, but we will cut leather up. Now, there are two different types of edges out there for knives, okay? You have straight edge knives and you have serrated edge knives. Straight edge knives make very clean cuts, but dull quickly, so they're constantly resharpened. Straight edge knives get through tougher jobs, but we're going to tear the food. So we're going to compare the two. I'm going to hand you this knife right here. I'm going to hold this leather in the air. You sit down in your seat. I'm going to hold this leather in the air for you. I just want you to go to, uh, start at the very top, go back and forth, I can argue on top of it, okay? Yeah, just like that. Awesome. So see how I made a very clean cut? That knife just took forever to get through. Yeah. That's why, because it has to be resharpened. This is a common knife you get at Target or Walmart. That's why people don't like these types of knives, because they don't quickly. I'm going to hand you this knife right here. This is like a normal steak knife you get at Target or Walmart, whatever you want to go. Um, so I'm going to hold this in the air for you. So in the very back, go back and forth. Awesome. So it got through. It just ripped and tore. It didn't make that clean cut. It took a little bit longer. That's why people don't like those. Now I'm going to hand you this. I just want you to start this our cut I just want you to start in the very front of the blade and just push yeah. forward one time, okay? Yeah, just like that. Wow. Pass it over. You're a big guy, Antonio, so I'm gonna double it up for you. Start in the very front, push forward. Makes that clean cut, just like that. Start in the very back and press back, pull back. Yep. So see that makes that clean cut. Now the reason why it makes that clean cut, even though it does look serrated, mm -hmm. is because it's actually not serrated. We use something very special, guys. Jump this down in your nose. It's something called a double D edge design. Something called a double DS design. It's a patent design by Cutco. No other company in the universe can use our design. Now, contrary to belief, people think that the teeth on Cutco will do the cutting. The teeth on our Cutco knives is not what does the cutting. The teeth on our Cutco knives act like bodyguards to the three microscopic recessed edges in between. So over time, the teeth on Cutco will dull down. But as long as someone's not taking their knives, going in the backyard, cutting down trees, and an individual piece of Cutco will stay sharp for three to four years, a set will stay sharp for 15, 20 years. About 10 to 15 years, um, sometimes 15 years, mostly 10 to 12. Um, and then the representative will talk to the customer about our warranty. Now, before I talk to you guys about our warranty, can you guys think of a company that offers a lifetime warranty, something you can buy once, use it all the time, and not have to replace? There's a company that's like that out there. If it ever breaks on you, it doesn't matter what happens, so it's getting replaced for free. Why are there companies out there? What about Jordan's? Yeah, if I rip my Jordans, well, they replace it for me. So, can you guys think of anything your parents own, you own, anything like that? I want, I want to see if, like, you know, like JBL speakers. You can get yeah, yeah. on those. You know, it breaks. Take it back if you use the newest one. Maybe I have no idea. Uh, I have those, so maybe. So, kind of half of one. Maybe. Yeah. So we see here. We can brainstorm. You know, all day together. You guys can come to you know the gym with me after this. We can hang out all night. But we probably only come up with a handful of companies that even do lifetime warranties. At the end of the day, most companies just don't do that because they don't want their products to last for people. Now, we don't do a lifetime warranty, but we do something something very special. It's something called a forever warranty. Okay, it's called a forever guarantee. Um, the keyword is forever, and this is why representatives, um, why we do two hundred fifty million dollars in sales each single year. This is why we outsell our competitors about one hundred sixty million dollars. Um, this is why people like Rashad have sold a lot of Cutco, even though they're not. Quote on, even though Rashad is not a quote unquote salesy person, it's because the company is 100% back behind the product. There's four points to our forever guarantee. I want you guys to jot these four points down. The first part is the forever performance guarantee. All right, forever performance. So that entails that once someone receives Cutco, if it breaks, cracks, chips, melts, anything that happens to the product, it's replaced for free. Doesn't matter what happens to it, it's getting replaced. It can, they can do a big cutting with it. If it breaks in half, it's getting replaced for free. No receipt, no proof of purchase is needed. If it says Cutco on it, it's getting replaced. Doesn't matter if it's not, it's going for a flower, it could be anything. Second is for sharpness. Um, if customers knives are so dull, they have two options. They need to A, pack it up, send it back to the factory. We'll sharpen polish and replace for free. Or they can call me. I'm one of the three service managers here in the area. And I go to the customer's house and I sharpen the knives right in front of them for free. They don't have to pay me to do that. They just have to let me pet their dogs and give me food and we're good to go. All right, so that's the first sharpness. They'll always have someone who can come over and sharpen the knives for them in the area. 
Third part is the forever replacement. Um, if someone abuses the product, like cuts steel in their garage, or does a weird something weird with it, we'll replace it for half off, but that doesn't happen because they're not to cut through, so people don't get weird like that. And the last part is the 15-day home condition my back guarantee. And what that entails is that once someone receives cut code, they have 15 businesses to try it out. They don't love it, send it back, get all their money back for free. Plain and simple. Now, looking at the 15-day unconditional money-back guarantee, do you guys think people ever send Cutco back once they buy it? No. Are they ever? So, you know, Antonio, why do we have this here if people hardly ever send it back? Why do we have that part of the guarantee? Um, it makes them, like, I guess people want to take care of that. We want people to feel very comfortable. Yeah. We want people to understand they can buy Cutco once, use it every single day, and they never have to worry about replacing it. So one of them kind of thing with Cutco. It's like forever gas. Have you guys ever put gas into your car before? Yeah. If you can put gas in your car one time, never have to fill up your tank again. You can drive anywhere you want, to Canada, to uh, to Richmond, to you know wherever you want to go, and you will never have to fill up your tank again. And if you buy a new car, you can funnel that forever gas over that new car. Would you buy that gas? Do you care what it costs? Absolutely not, because no. God knows what we yeah. spend a year on gas. And it's the same thing with Cutco. People bought the knives once, they use it all the time, yeah. and they don't have to worry about replacing it because it's forever guaranteed. <laughs> After that, the rep, hold your questions at the end. After that, the representative will walk the customer through the rest of the presentation, talk to the customer about the knives, about getting different options, different colorways, Versace white, Bugatti black, Ferrari red, and look at the page, talk about the sure bigger sets, people who like to cook, who love to get in the kitchen, look at the page, talk about smaller sets, all that kind of stuff. Flatware, Trey Cookware, our best kept secret. And I'll put the page here. Talk about this, this is what I call the dad page. This is the dad's freak out. We manufacture all the knives, uh, military, US military, K bar knives, again, pocket knives, uh, garden tools, kitchen knives, or, uh, barbecue sets, hunting knives, and fishing knives, sporting knives. Then gift sets, trip for weddings, all that kind of stuff. Now, as far as how long an appointment will take, an average appointment takes anywhere between 35 to 40 minutes, depending on talking chit chat. As far as the price point for the product goes, an individual piece of Cutco can range anywhere from a, you know $20 upwards to a few hundred dollars. A set of Cutco can range anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand. It just depends on what a customer wants to get. It's like a MacBook or a TV, it just ranges. As far as how much a customer can spend with the representative, a customer can spend as little as $20 or they can spend as much as $10,000. Um, there's no limit, but our average order, okay, our AO is $330. That is the average amount that a representative will sell each and every single time they make a sale. Then we have our CP. Our CP stands for closing percentage. This is the, um, the statistical amount of times that a rep representative will make a sale out of 10. And in real estate, if a real estate agent shows 10 houses, they might sell two. Maybe three. It depends upon their listing, their experience. Um, in Cutco, the representative sees 10 people in a row, 10 soccer moms, 10 families. They will on average sell seven out of 10 of those people. 70% of those people will say yes. Now, these are new representative averages. Okay, these are not people who have been with us for a couple of months, a couple of years, a couple of weeks. These are people when they're brand new in the job. Um, now, there's a reason why our representative averages are so high, even though 95% of the people we select for the position have no prior experience before in doing anything like this. One reason why our representative averages are so high is because customers can split up their payments into two to three or five monthly payment plans, making Cutco affordable for anyone, anywhere, anytime. We accept all we accept all forms of payment, debit card, credit card, MasterCard, Visa's, gold watches. Um, we also get the quality of the product, it's forever guaranteed. It's very easy to talk about, very simple to sell. And then the last reason is because of the quality of our training program. And again, in training, our philosophy is this to take on people who have never had experience before and teach them how to become successful right away with the position. Our training has been recognized in 53 collegiate textbooks. We've been adopted in nine state college classrooms, Michigan State, Michigan University, Rutgers University, University of Calgary in Canada, Babson College, um, University of uh, North Carolina, um, as well as um, um, Purdue and Temple University as well. But we're very close to with David H. Henry at NC State University, where his students had to actually market Cutco just, <coughs> just to graduate from school with a course practicum. And here's what he had to say. To prospective Cutco sales representatives, for the past few years, I have directly incorporated Vector Marketing in their Cutco line of products into my personal selling course at North Carolina State University. Vector managers actively interact with my students, and the experience becomes an integral part of the course. Hundreds of my students have now participated in what has become widely known as the Cutco Project. For many, it was a differentiating factor in gaining employment after graduation or an internship while still in school. My primary focus as an educator is to prepare students to be effective business people, namely in the sales and marketing area. I spend a great deal of time focusing on developing the skill set of students. This is where the pro uh, Cutco project fits in. After completing the course, my students are able to focus on the skill set the project helps to either build or strengthen. 
Students do not discuss the experience of one of just selling knives, but rather is one where they enhance their time management skills or improve their interpersonal communication skills. Some students learn how to overcome objections and successfully deal with a variety of business issues. Everybody draws something positive from the project. The satisfaction level among the students over the years has been nearly 100% positive. Even my students who do not seek a sales position after graduation, finally the project experience helps them become better communicators and consequently better interviewers. In addition, it is not uncommon for me to hear from former students who tell me that the skills they learned during the Cutco project are used daily in their careers. In some, I would recommend anyone who looks to improve the odds of employment or to enhance your communication skill set to consider the Cutco experience. As with most things in life, you get out of it what you put into it. Regards, David H. Henard, PhD, head of the marketing department for NC State for over 14 and a half years. So we are very close to with, uh, again, with them and many universities across the country, which is why our programs are very extensive, but they're delivered in a very simplistic way so that anybody can understand. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Now, before we go to the next section, I want to take you guys back to the scissors. Because um, when I came up here and I sold these scissors to you guys, did I do anything fancy? Yeah, you did. Is that very fancy? Um, no, not really. Um, so, again, so my point about that is this, guys, is it does not matter who I am. It doesn't matter where I went to school. It doesn't matter where I study. It doesn't matter whether I'm an extrovert or introvert. None of that matters. The product is the main attraction. The product is what sells itself, which is why here, we don't look for hardcore, slick salesy people. We look for very down-to-earth, very genuine people who I can feel comfortable working with and can make other people feel comfortable around because the product is what sells itself. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Cool. Now we're going to go to the next section. I'm talking to you guys about the market. Now, as far as our market goes, guys, we have what is known as a market niche, or in other words, a market advantage. Most people don't have nice knives. Most people just have the common knives like we used to cut the rope and leather with. However, most people are not actively going out to stores to buy nice knives. It's just not a conversation moms and dads are having at home. My parents are never sitting at home leaving work early or leaving on early on a Saturday morning to go to the store to buy a brand new set of knives they've always wanted to. It is the last thing on someone's mind typically to go online, do research, and find a good set of knives in the stores. And that's why we direct market our products so we can educate customers. The color industry is a billion dollar year industry. And we we have been the number one selling brand in kitchen in the United States for the past 35 consecutive years, and we have what is known as a target market. Our target market, they have people who are 30 plus years or older, and they have full-time jobs. Antonio, why is this our target market? Why is this who we market cut to? Why is this our target market? Why is this who we market cut to? People that you call it. Yeah, this is who we do the most what? Like you said, cutting. most cooking, right? We don't market to college students. College students are barely surviving with ramen noodles at night, okay? We market to people who are 30 plus years older. They probably have a couple kids. They're not going to Outback Steakhouse every single night spending $30 a head. They're going to the grocery store to buy groceries, to cut stuff up, study, show people eat every single day. Then people who are full-time jobs, again, they have supplemental income. Um, just like Apple doesn't market to the 12 or 13 year old who can't afford to buy a $1,000 iPhone. No, Apple markets to, again, the adults who have the means of income to pay for a $1,000 iPhone. And it's the same exact thing here, which is why this is our target market. This is who we market Cutco to, because those are the people who need the knives, those are the people who use the knives. Now, as far as scheduling goes, guys, as you know, we work on a very professional appointment style basis only. Many of our representatives only see people if there is an appointment set and they know we're coming. Many of our part-time representatives, if someone is more part-time with us, they'll do between 10 to 15 appointments in a week in the summertime. If someone is more full-time in the summer, they'll do between 20 to 25 appointments a week. If someone's more part-time during the school year, they'll do between 7 to 10, on a low end, 7, on a high end, pretty much 10. And if they're more full-time, they'll do between 10 to 15, sometimes 20, depending upon their schedule. But regardless, we sit down with our people at the beginning of each week to help plan their schedule around all their other obligations. And we base everybody's schedule around three things. Make sure you jot these three things down your notes. The first thing that we base somebody's schedule around here is, number one, is their availability. Their availability. How much time is someone have available? Do they have another job? Do they have another sport? Do they have a girlfriend or boyfriend? You know, what do they have going on? When I started with Cutco, I was very busy. I was wrestling in college. I had a girlfriend. I was um, in clubs and, activ clubs and activities. So it was really hard for me to find a job that going to bounce well on my schedule. So with Cutco, I, during the school year while wrestling, I probably worked on weeknights because that was what was best for my schedule and on weekends. Some people prefer not to work on weeknights or weekends. Everybody's schedule is a little bit different, but we base it on someone's availability. How much time do they have available? Number two thing we base it around is someone's financial objective. Financial objective. Some people like money. 
Some people don't. Some people want to make a lot of money. Some people don't really care to do that. For me, I was very money motivated when I was in college because I didn't want to have to be that guy that asked my mom for money all the time. I wanted to, again, be very financially independent and not have to worry about that. I also wanted to pay my way to school and um, become very financial. Um, and gain a lot of financial literacy while I was young. Um, some people don't, so I bust my butt and I take advantage of the commission program. Some people don't really care to do that. They just want to make an extra few hundred bucks a week here and there so they go to pizza on the weekends. Everybody's a little bit different based on someone's financial objective. And then number three thing we based around is somebody's work ethic. Work ethic. Fact is, some people like to work, some people don't. Everybody's a little bit different based around somebody's work ethic. Now, when our representatives first began, Antonio, they do the first few practice appointments with people that they know and feel very comfortable with. Why do you think our representatives like to start off that way? Like you said, it makes you feel more comfortable. You know, they, when someone new, they tend to get nervous. And when they get used to the presentation, yeah. right? They get good feedback. They get their feet wet. Which is why when our representatives first began, they do the first few practice appointments really know who they're comfortable with and really get settled into it. So now I was there the job, I had no prior experience in anything like this before, but I was able to get very comfortable and, and used to it because I started feeling who I feel very comfortable with. So I showed my mom cutco, showed some of my friends' parents cutco, my coaches, teachers, neighbors, my girlfriend's parents cutco, my ex girlfriend's parents cutco. So I was able to get very settled into it, get good feedback, get my feet wet, and also build a lot of recommendations because we do not knock on doors or put the phone book to get people interested in cutco because of a project, if a product is as good as it is, how should most people hear about it? Through what? Or in other words, word of mouth. Word of mouth is the most powerful form of advertising. Have you guys ever seen a Lamborghini commercial? They exactly don't have one. Um, Rolex, Louis Vuitton, um, Bentley, those companies do not advertise on TV because it's a very high quality exclusive products and we operate in the same philosophy through word of mouth. That is why we do $250 million in sales each and every single year. That is how we outsell our competitor by $160 million because our programs here are what work. Now, I'm going to use an example on this board to explain exactly how recommendations work in our organization. It's very important that you guys follow along with me in your notes here. I'm going to use Ms. Veronica Silva on the Wall of Champions right there if you want to connect the name with the face to explain exactly how recommendations should work. So make sure to follow along with me in your notes. Now, Ms. Veronica Silva is currently a rising senior at East Carolina University. She is studying criminal justice. Her dream is to become an immigration lawyer. She is what is known as a CSP with an organization. She is a cutco sales professional. Meaning she sells cutco full-time in the summertime at her highest commission level and part-time around her classes while she's in school. Now, notice she's going to be an immigration lawyer. She is going on a completely different path than sales and marketing. But she's with cutco gains a valuable experience for her resume to separate herself from her peers in college and also, again, for the financial opportunity that way she paid her help, helps pay her way to school. Uh, I'm going to use her as an example to explain exactly how recommendations work. Now, Ms. Bronca Silva, when she was new, she went out, she completed her first couple of days, she went out, she completed 10 appointments. She went out, she completed 10 appointments because she didn't feel very comfortable with. Now, at the end of each appointment, we teach our representatives how to ask for the order. So let's just ask the question, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, what would you guys like to get today? Okay, it's very low key. Then we teach our representatives how to ask for recommendations. So let's just ask the question, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, who do you guys know that would be nice enough to take a quick look at cut cup? And on average, every single time a representative asks that question, they will on average receive five to ten referrals, or in other words, recommendations, each appointment that they complete at the end. Okay, so it's five to ten referrals each appointment. So Antonio, if a representative is still does ten appointments, all right, on average, our representative receives five to ten referrals each appointment. How many referrals will she roughly have after she's completing ten appointments? Fifty to hundred. So it snowballs very, very quickly. Now, there's a few reasons for why representatives receive so many referrals on their appointments when they're brand new, even though 95% of people we select in the position have no prior experience or anything like this. One of the reasons why representatives receive so many referrals when they're new and on every single appointment, they average a lot, is number one is because the customer is very comfortable with the process because they are often the time to recommend themselves too. It's like telling a friend about a great movie. How many of you guys by a show of hands have ever watched a great movie before? Raise your hand. How many of you guys told somebody about that great movie? It's the same thing. If I was your best friend, I came to him and I was like, here's the deal. Um, here's the movie Deadpool. Oh my god, you gotta go watch it. You'll love it. It's fantastic. What's your problem you're gonna do? I think I watched it with his best friend. I told him about it. Um, it's the same thing here with the representative, which is why representatives receive some referrals because the is very comfortable with the process because it's like telling a friend about a great movie. Um, another reason why represent, uh, representatives receive some referrals on their appointments when they're new is because the customer is very comfortable with that because they love the product, they love the low key relaxed presentation, they love the quality, they love seeing the penny get decimated by the scissors, so they're very comfortable recommending them to the representative um, because again, they enjoy the process. Now, in this way, our representatives have a very common connection with the referral. They can call to set up a good time to meet at the customer's house 
or they can do a virtual presentation program from their dorm room, from the office, from their house, because we have a virtual presentation program for our students. Now, if you understand to this point, you'll see that our representatives do not do door-to-door -door sales, we do not do cold calling, and we do not do any telemarketing. Our representatives only contact people who have been personally recommended them to see the appointment, and it's always a very warm welcome. Because we teach our representatives how to ask for pros in the training, but we also teach them how to um, have the customer send up a heads-up text, a heads-up call, or a heads-up email to those people that are recommended. That way, when Ms. Silva contacts them, there is always a very warm welcome, of making our representative job very simple and very, very easy easy because those are people already expecting the call from her. Does that make sense, guys? Now, if a representative starts where they live, where most of the recommendations live? In the same way, Antonio. Same area. So many of our representatives work in the same area that they live in, just like many real estate agents do. However, there are no territory restrictions. Representatives can show cover to anyone they want in the world because of our virtual presentation program. Now, since a representative set their own appointments, they have a very flexible schedule. They work anywhere between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. Some people like to work mornings. Some people like to work afternoon meetings. Other people prefer not to. Regardless, we sit down with the representative meeting and each week have time to schedule around all their other obligations. And when a representative places an order, all that representative does is place that order in online. It's just directly from the factory into the customer's house. So representatives don't have to buy products to sell on hand or anything like that. It's all done directly from the factory into the customer's house through a, v, um, through a free account that we provide to them. Um, online. Does that make sense, guys? Now, I'm going to talk to you guys about the pay. Now, as far as our pay, guys, goes, um, we have something very unique here. We have something called a two-part pay program. Make sure to follow along with me in that tier. We have a two-part pay program. We have a base pay, and then we have an incentive pay. <clears throat> our base pay is a guaranteed rate, so representatives are guaranteed a steady, consistent paycheck each and every single week. Okay, our base pay Again, it is seventeen dollars. It's seventeen dollars per appointment. Now we do this per appointment and not per hour for a few reasons. <clears throat> a lot of times, a representative goes to some Gucko who already owns the product. That person does not need to see the whole presentation. They just want to see the new stuff, and they're in and out and pick out much stuff to get, and they're in and out like 20, 15 minutes. Other times we're represented by a show someone Kako who they haven't spoken to or Tracy in a while and all that person wants to do is catch up. So they do that for an hour, then they do the presentation, they play with the dog, and they're like, hey, do you want a steak for dinner afterwards? I know someone's making me a steak dinner, I'm staying all night. Okay, so we do a per appointment. So as an example, average appointment takes about 40 minutes, call it an hour. Represent those 10 appointments, they're guaranteed $170 in income no matter what. Doesn't matter what happens, it's guaranteed. They do 20 appointments, they're guaranteed $340. There are no minimum amount of appointments necessary to qualify for the base pay. It's always guaranteed a representative. Whether they do three appointments in a week or they do 20, and whether they sell or not, it's always there. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. and that's our base pay. Now we'll tell you guys about our incentive, aka our commission. Now our incentive is, again, for people in the past who have had a job before where they worked harder than others, but um, got paid less for the same. Here it is very different. The poor cock car is an antique mall. I bust my butt, work harder than everybody. Um, but it still didn't matter. I still got paid less for the same at the end of the week because I was the youngest guy on the totem pole and I was the youngest guy there. Here it's very different though. Representatives who work harder here, they earn more income here in the story because of our incentive program. Now, representatives do not receive both. They receive whichever one is higher of the two. Now I'm going to go over exactly how that works right here, right now. Or excuse me, once I cover the incentive, excuse me. Now, our incentive is based upon a representative's total career sales. So what that means is that once somebody hits a level, they can never move down, they can only continue to move up. For example, we have a lot of students that will work with us during the school during the summertime. They'll go back to school during the school year, away kind of far, so they, again, only come back and work on breaks, and they're still the same level they left at. So, for example, Rashad's going to UMD, so when he goes to UMD, he's probably going to take some time off. He'll come back over his Christmas break, though. He'll still be at the same level that he had left at once he left before. So we don't devote people for taking time off or going to study abroad or anything like that. Um, once somebody hits a level, they can never move down, only continue to move up, it never resets. And here's exactly how it works. Make sure to follow along your notes. From $0 to $1,000 in career sales, a representative will make a 10% commission on anything that they sell. Then from $1,000 to $3,000, a representative will make a 15% commission. From $3,000 to $6,000, a representative will make a 20% commission. And from $6,000 to $10,000, a representative will make a 25% commission. And then ten thousand dollars and up represent make a thirty percent commission. The zero to one thousand is ten percent, one to three thousand is fifteen percent, three to six thousand is twenty percent, six to ten is twenty-five, 
$10,000. Now, who in here by a show of hands can tell me what is our company average order? You can cheat if you need to, but who can tell me? What's our company average order? 3.30. So 3.30 average order, Antonio. How many orders does that take somebody to write up to sell a thousand bucks? About four, right? And how many days do you think that probably takes somebody? Right, it takes two days. Um, so it doesn't take you long on the average. Um, again, Rashad recommended you, right? Rashad did that in two days. You know Andrew Mosier by any yeah. chance? Okay, cool. Andrew, sold, Andrew did that his very first appointment. Okay, cool. so it doesn't take people long at all. On average, it takes everyone two days. Some people do their first appointment. Most of everybody does their first two days. So 0 to 1,000 is 10%. 1 to 3,000 is 15%. 3 to 6,000 is 20%. 6 to 10,000 is 25. $10,000 is 30%. So if you know Andrew, Andrew sold $10,000 those first 10 days of the job. So again, some people do that first 10 days, some people do the first month, some takes summer. But it doesn't take people long at all. Now, the commission levels do go higher, so it goes 15, 20, 25, 30. Commission levels do go higher. They go all the way to 50% commission, start off since you're at 50%. But if you're just like a training, Mr. Hunter covers exactly how that works. Now, again, our representatives do not receive both. They receive whichever one is higher of the two. And I'm going to go over exactly how that works right here, right now. Now, let's say it's week one. Let's say it's week one. Let's say it's a representative's first week on the job, and they go out and they do 10 points. Well, they go and they do 10 appointments. They're guaranteed $170 in income no matter what. doesn't matter what happens. It's guaranteed. Now, let's say those 10 appointments, though, they only sell $1,000. Now, they probably sell more, but we're going to keep the math very simple, very easy. They only sell $1,000. They're brand new. They're making 10% commission. It's $100 in the commission, but at the end of the week, we're going to pay them $170, not the $100. The reason why is because $170 is higher than the $100. So we're always going to make up the difference. That way if someone has an off week, they're always guaranteed higher pay. That way you're going to have the security of that base pay to be there. That way they can have a very low key relaxed approach and not put any pressure on themselves or anybody else. Does that make sense, guys? That's the week one. Let me use another example just to make sure you understand. Let's say it's week two. Let's say it's week two. Let's say it's a representative of the second week on the job. Let's say they go out. And they, this week's crazy. They're out of town for like six days. They only really hack the day that they're in town. So they, they, they go out and they do four appointments. Okay, so they go out and they do four points. Okay, so they're guaranteed sixty-eight dollars in income no matter what, and they do four points. Now let's say those four points they go out and they sell a thousand dollars like normal. Sure, we're gonna pay them one hundred and fifty dollars that week, not the sixty-eight. And the reason why is because one hundred and fifty is higher than sixty-eight. And so you may be wondering, well, hey, Mr. Cross, they sold the same amount as they, as they did the week before. How are they earning more income? Well, the reason why is because the week before they sold $1,000. So as soon as they sold $1,000, they got instantly promoted. So they got a 50% pay increase. So now they make a 50% commission. They can sell the same amount, but they'll earn more income. So the more somebody sells, the more income they can potentially make. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Let me recap just to make sure we understand. Our representatives here, guys, they are paid weekly, not bi-weekly. Represents we see whichever pay program is higher, but not both. Most of our people are on direct deposit. If someone's on direct deposit, they get paid every Friday. So yesterday was payday for most of our people. Some people are on paper checks, so they get paid a couple of days later. It's snail mail. They get paid off Mondays of every week um, after the initial direct deposit for everybody else because it ships directly. The, um, the paychecks ship directly from the factory into the representative's house. So it doesn't ship here. It ships to their house. Um, again, represents we see whichever pay program is higher, not both. The base pay provides the floor for our people to stand on. That way, they're guaranteed a steady a paycheck each and every single week, and then with the incentive, there is a commission gap. They can make as much income as they want. Now, our representatives have the security of that base pay, but what do you guys often think they focus more on? Uh, the incentive, rate. because that's where they can earn more income. That's how they can help pay for school. Because the incentive, there is no commission gap. They can make as much income as they want. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Now, that's got to be pretty easy to see. While we have to be very selective in our interview process, mm -hmm. and why you two are the only ones that decided to keep our second portion because again um, of the quality of our pay program. Now I'll talk to you guys about our training, and then I'll wrap up with the perks and the benefits of the position. Now as far as our training goes, guys, we have something very unique here. It's something called a three-part training program. We have a three-part training program. Part of the reason that we can afford to have the pay program that we offer is because of the quality of our training program. In the training, we have a three-part. First part shows something called an initial training. It is an initial training. Second phase is training appointments. And third phase is ongoing training. Now our initial training is done here in the office. It is two 
have days in our office that is run by me, Mr. Koss, or Mr. Herman. And we cover the product and our philosophies in complete detail. Now, our initial training is two half days done here in our office. That is run by me or Mr. Roman. And now, Mr. Roman is our division manager. He's our division coordinator. He is the owner and operator of this office. He is the number one trainer in the entire company. I did not share that with you because I'm biased. I've been with him for three and a half years. I share that with you because on average, our representatives here sell four times more than any other representative across the country because of the quality of this training program. To give you an idea, I've sold about $300,000 worth of Cutco myself. He has sold over $17 million worth of Cutco. Again, number one trainer in the company, um, an amazing manager, amazing of uh, him being here. He oversees the state of Virginia for the company, but he's the owner. This is our headquarter location for the company. Um, the state. Um, and Mr. Roman and myself, we cover the product and our philosophies in complete detail. Now, um, is it is Shazor, correct? Yeah. Shazor, why do you think we cover the product in complete detail during training for people we select? Why do we do that? Um, so, you can, the reason you use... Why do we cover the product in detail? Like, why do we teach it? Oh, um, so you know all about it and you can uh, say that exact same thing to any other customer who wants to buy. Right, so we, again, so our people that we select for the position know exactly what they need to do. 95% yeah. of the people we select for the position come into training not knowing how to do anything um, and no, having no experience in anything like this, but they leave training feeling very confident ready to go because of the quality of our training program. So we make sure our people are ready to go. Um, so we teach them every detail about the products, about how to make phone calls, how to schedule appointments, how to do everything. We cover that in our training program. So that's initial training. Second base is something called training appointments, and this is with a bait, and then the philosophy is how we do what we do, why we do what we do, why our program is successful. And then the second base is training appointments, and this is with the base and the incentive get kicked in right away. This is where the pay starts. Now, our initial training, it is unpaid, but it represents you a training on their resume to say they attended the two half day professional sales seminar for a $250 million marketing company. We also award all the products completely for free to our students who use the presentations. We don't require people to purchase or buy anything. It is given to them completely for free. But in their training appointments, the um, base and the incentive get kicked in. Now, as I explained before, our representatives start by practicing with people they know and feel very comfortable with in order to get settled in the presentation. And these practice points, we give our people an outline that they're able to use on their presentations to guide themselves throughout it. So as long as someone can read, they can sell cut code. If they can't read again, it's okay. We have pictures. Um, and then in those first few initial training points, those people that they're seeing, they're not required to buy anything at all, but they have to do anyways because they see the quality of the product. They see the guarantee, not the person's skill set when they're brand new. And in the short term, this builds our people's confidence and success breeds success. Just like when I have a son one day, I am definitely going to have him wrestle. But I'm not going to have him wrestle a two-time national champion as far as on the mat because I don't want to destroy his confidence. I want to help him wrestle. I want to have him wrestle with kids his age when he's new so he can get used to it and have fun. And it's the same thing here with our training appointments. And the third phase is ongoing training. There's three things I want you guys to jump underneath here as I wrap up. Um, the first thing I want you guys to jot down is something called coaching slash coaching calls. Coaching slash coaching calls. Second phase is something, or second thing I want you guys to jot down is something called team meetings. And the third thing is TLA, which stands for the Leadership Academy. The Leadership Academy. Now, we do not leave our people in the dark here. Anybody we select for the position, our primary focus is to turn them into a five-star recruit. And the way we do that is through our ongoing training program. We want to develop our people personally, professionally, and financially. And we do that with, again, our ongoing training program. And the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is our um, coaching slash coaching calls. Um, and again, this office is a home base for people to be able to work out of. So our representative work in the area they probably live in. So before their first round of points each day, they'll call into the, uh, the office for me or one of my assistant managers for a two to three minute coaching call before their first appointment of the day. We give them tips, advice. We light them on fire before they go to their first uh, appointment of the day. And they're able to call us all the appointment afterwards to get help. That way we dramatically cut their learning curve completely in half. And we save them from the mistakes that we as managers made when we are um, brand new representatives. That's our coaching slash coaching calls. And then calls afterwards to debrief. Um, second thing is um, team meetings. Each of them is a week. The entire squad gets together in our office. It's wall to wall in our training room. We give our certificates, trophies, prizes. We shoot basketballs for $100 bills. I'm feeling nice that night. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to team night out. It's required fun um, where we go bowling, go to eat at glory days, where we go to top golf or play basketball at Jefferson. If we do anything competitive, I'm going to 
you know, forget everybody in that. So I'm going to start taking that out. Um, and the last thing is um, TLA, or Leadership Academy. This is a networking event for our students to be a part of. Um, it's a leadership course that we teach about finances, um, management, and we help identify our future leaders for um, different opportunities and other internships that we have. Um, but again, it's not about who you know, it's how you know the sort of opportunity. So we just really make something with our best and brightest in our area and on the state. Um, that's our coaching. So that's coaching call program. That's our training. Now I'm talking to you guys about perks and the benefits. Now as far as the perks and the benefits go, the first perk I want you guys to jot down is something called the Sample Kit Program. Something called our Sample Kit Program. And our Sample Kit Program is where we loan out $450 retail worth of gun codes to our students using presentations. They're not required to purchase or buy anything. It is given to them completely for free. We just require character references to vouch them. That is our again sample kit program. Second thing is our uh, is our scholarship program. I want you guys to jot that down in your notes. Our scholarship program. We offer a scholarship program, an internship program, and a co-op program as well, which means that some students are earning college credit working with us. We also provide letters of recommendation. We provide length of endorsements. We have our own, our own academic advisory board that promotes our programs. And then our students have the opportunity to win a scholarship based upon the performance of the company. Um, again, we offer, again, this, it, the scholarship um, is for uh, top students. This can only be earned, not given. But our students have the opportunity to earn scholarships um, based upon the performance of the company. That's our scholarship program. And the next thing I want you guys to jot down is advancement. A representative have the opportunity to advance and move up based upon the performance of the company. This can include our management training program, our internship program, and our code programs. And the last thing I'll talk to you guys about is the experience of the team. Because bottom line, money comes and money goes, but experience stays with something forever. What is every employer out there looking for? Somebody with a lot of what? Commitment. No. So a lot of experience, right? Um, because, and here's the deal. So employees are going a lot of experience, but the problem is most college students, they don't have that. Because they use the same stuff that everyone else does during their school. Now, I'm not against work. Honest work is honest work, but head lifeguard, nanny, babysitter, being an intern at that's company, Chick-fil-A, everybody does those types of jobs. And I hate to be the very bad news, but it is a very tough job market out there for college students, and it's not going to be better anytime soon. Here's a very interesting statistic. Give me your best of this question, Antonio. What percentage of last year's college students do you think graduated with a job after school in 2016? What percentage do you think did? 15%. Scares me that you started that low. But it's actually a little bit higher. It's 22%. Um, and that scares me because that means that most students are now graduating at twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, some less, some more in debt, and they can't find a job for school. See, back in the day when our parents were in college, Having a degree meant something. Nowadays, every single person has one, so it takes so much more use of a piece of paper, mommy and daddy's connections, and a dream, and, a, and again, a high GPA to land a position nowadays. Companies are looking for someone with real applicable experience. And last year, over 65% of college students graduated with above a career GPA and an internship. So we hear that, and we're like, wow, that's awesome. But what that tells us is that most students nowadays are graduating with 3, 3, 3, 5, 3, 7 GPA and an internship. So that 3, 7 GPA and internship that everybody has doesn't make people one of few, it makes them one of many. And Cutco is so powerful because regardless of what somebody wants to do, the soft skills, the experience are transferable. That is why we have been referenced in 53 Collegiate Textbooks, why we've been adopted to nice State College Classrooms, that's why NC State Raleigh's for so long, um, that's why we've been highlighting the Wall Street Journal three different times, and while the LA Times wrote about us being the number one stepping stone job for a college student in America, and that's why Entrepreneur.com did an article on Cutco. They highlighted the former CEO of Uber, Travis, sold Cutco while he was in college, he was asked about his experience doing so, and when he told the interviewer, his, his experience selling Cutco was more instrumental in building his business than anything you ever learned before. So it doesn't matter what somebody wants to go into, whether it's technology, engineering, medicine, business, you know, underwater basket weaving, because the skills like public speaking, presentation skills, the ability to handle an objection, the ability to be on one's feet, even stuff as simple as managing one's own time or managing deadlines or making professional phone calls. Because, I mean, newsflash, there is not one job, not one in the real world where people do not speak fresh on the phone, people. But the problem is with college students who don't have that because they don't like talking to their friends on the phone. Everything's at 150 characters or less nowadays. These are very soft skills. They are not taught in classrooms. They are not taught in school books. They are not taught in the internship. And that's why I've been here for three and a half years because, um, again, the opportunity that I got when I was young. Um, and the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the team. Bottom line, I love the team. I love who I get to surround myself with. I get to work with above kicking 18 to 25 girls each and every single day. And I learned at a very young age, um, playing, I, you know, I wrestled, played football, ran track. I learned at a very young age that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Um, you spend your time with people who are lazy, negative, dressed like crap, make no money. That's going to bring you down. But in this side of the spectrum, you should have people who are positive, motivated, dress better than you, know more than you, someone you'd like to become. Like That is what brings people up. Iron sharpens iron. And our people here have the every day, have the opportunities to run, so people are always going to bring them up and always going to have a positive impact on them. 
Um, and bottom line, my job title here is to be a coach. Um, it's not to be a boss. It's not to be a micromanager. It is to be a coach. It is to figure out exactly what it is my people want. And make sure I do everything in my power, every single day to help them get that. Whether it's income, experience, resume, um, my job title here is to help my people um, and again to be there for them. So bottom line, I absolutely love the team. I love who I get to try myself with. Now, those are the details of the job. If you have any questions, keep it to yourself. It's not going to be with each of you here short in the next few minutes to bring you back to give you a final decision. But before I meet with you, I'm going to, pull, I'm going to separate you guys across the room, and I'm going to hand you a brief acceptance criteria sheet. This will be your final chance to make a last impression on me before I meet with you. The order that I call you back in has no indication to whether or not you got the position or not. It is completely random. But I'll be bringing you back each shortly. You're going to put your name on the top. If you forgot your name, just refer to your driver's license. We're going to answer the yes or no questions first, and then we're going to come back with these three short additional questions afterwards. Um, and then, guys, once you finish, just make kind, quiet, and courteous with someone working around you. Um, you can be on your cell phones, get up and look at some of the resumes. Just to make courteous to those, those who are still going to be working with you, okay? So I'm going to have you, I'm going to have you move your seat right here in the wall of the system and move your seat. I'm going to meet with you first, Antonio. Go ahead and follow me back to my office, okay? Just the behind you.